Idaho has always been one of those places that draws people in. It is no wonder with the vast landscapes of the high desert to the majestic peaks of her mountaintops. It has brought in so many in search of her gems and minerals. As we continue our journey through the mountains to the mining town of Bay Horse, I can't help but think back to the old west days and what it must have been like for them to have traveled these same paths. Idaho's mining history has always captured my interest. Today, we are going to take a walk through one of these old ghost towns. Come with me and experience it firsthand. Bay Horse is an old mine that was established in 1877. It is located in Custer County within Yankee Fork State Park. This is one of three town sites in Idaho that in many ways look just as they did well over a century ago. Walking through this old ghost town, we find that the streets are narrow and dusty, just like being right back in that rugged time. The buildings that remain standing almost seem as though its residents just disappeared, leaving behind what we still see today. It really gives its name of a ghost town. In these clips here, you can see the old Wells Fargo building still standing today, though partially dilapidated. It was the town's first and only bank. Where did these brave pioneers come from? How far did they travel? What were some of their first thoughts when their eyes saw the Rocky Canyon for the first time? These are only a couple of questions that I wish that I could have asked them. I was absolutely astonished just looking at all these hand-built structures. The blood, sweat, and tears that went into those buildings was evident from just a single glance. The effort required to carve the raw timber and stone into these tall structures that still stand today is unfathomable. Even though the pioneers were bruised and battered from their journeys, they had to build, otherwise they may not have survived this winter. With the harsh winters that would hit these high mountain areas, I can only imagine the amount of work it took in the summer months. There was no time to slow with winter weather creeping at their back door. Moving into the winter months, I'm sure that had to be hard on the pioneers, with the following months bringing days of high snows and temps well below freezing. If you were not prepared for winter back in the day, winter would be sure to consume you. With the short life of the town, it started out as a gold mine which soon became irrelevant. After the discovery of silver in the town, it boomed to life once again. How do you suppose the name of Bay Horse came to be? As the legend goes, a prospector found silver, but nobody could remember his name. The only thing they could remember about him was his two beloved Bay Horses. So, the townsfolk all came together and agreed to name the town after his two favorite horses. Or, at least the breed of those horses. In 1976, the ghost community of Bay Horse was added to the National Register of Historic Places. The town was purchased by Idaho in 2006 and opened to the public in 2009 and joined to the land of the Yankee Fork. Why did the ghost town turn, well, into a ghost town? The answer is simple. The rich veins of silver and lead ran dry. That, however, was not the only cause. There was a fire in 1889 that destroyed many buildings. Sadly, all mining operations were halted by the year 1915. News of Bay Horse is not all sad, for it served as Idaho's longest running silver and lead producers. It's a little saddening seeing these dilapidated and broken buildings to think about what it must have been like. All the memories, all the happy times, all the bad times that happened there. And just think, 
if it didn't burn down and break down, this could have been a major city in Idaho. The beauty that can be found here is astonishing, from the serene creeks to whistling woods. However, be careful how far you go into the woods. You may disturb an untended grave. Though off the beaten trail and in a state of disarray, they still need to be respected. Those that lay there may be your ancestors after all. If Jeeping has taught me anything, it's to enjoy the gifts Mother Nature has bestowed upon us. From the absolutely scenic woods to the gentle streams that flow so easily. Every time we go out, the saying, stop and smell the flowers, pops into my head. And I feel like going out and doing this is doing exactly that. We leave the hustle and bustle of the city life and throw the concerns of work out the window to go enjoy something a bit more natural. For those of you out there that don't get to leave the city often, I recommend it or it might just change your life for the better. Believe it or not, getting away from the convenience of life has made my life easier. Being able to push a button and whatever you want is at your fingertips removes the joy of overcoming an obstacle. Sometimes, all we need is that small amount of dopamine to get through the upcoming week. Going back and forth on these windy, dusty trails, we came across a mountain lake. Its beauty was unparalleled. We would like to take this moment to welcome you to join us on our next Jeeping adventure. The beauty that surrounds these places are no wonder why people flock to these areas for the vast array of activities from the dusty trails around the open plains to the highest of mountains.